I'm doing everything I can. I am coming after the lost. Uh, we find in other places where he said, I, I didn't come uh, for those that have no need, that don't need a physician. I came for those that are sick. Mm -hmm. And so as Jesus was crystal clear about what he was here for, when he left planet Earth, when he ascended to glory again, he was very clear about what we were to do in his absence. Or in, in when he would be caught away at the right hand of the Father and would send the Comforter, that he, we call this the Great Commission. And we embrace and accept this, that we are to go into all the world and preach the gospel, the good news. Everybody in the world needs the Lord. Now why would God do this? The reason is, is that God loves people more than anything else in the entire world. God loves people. We are the pinnacle of his creation. We are the reason that Jesus Christ came to earth to give his life. He died for lost humanity. And Jesus was clear about his mission, and so we can't afford to be distracted here in 2017 from what we are here for, what we are here in this holler for, what your pastor is here for, what you are here for, yes. and that is that we must be here to reach the lost. Amen. When you come across the word lost in the New Testament, the word lost has several meanings, but for the most part, it simply means that that you're out of that it's out of place. Uh, and this parable teaching, uh, when he is teaching about the lost sheep, uh, it belongs in the fold, and it's not in the fold, and so it's out of its place. When he talks about the lost coin, it doesn't belong lost; it belongs uh, with the other coins that belong. Uh, some say that it makes that it perhaps may have been a headdress for wedding. I'm not sure. But the word lost really just means out of place. And so I thought to how to illustrate this to you this morning. Um, imagine with me, if you will, Sister Adams has uh, had an appointment and she's going to go have her hair done. And so someone's going to take her. She told me they don't let her drive too much by herself anymore. And so she has an appointment and someone's driving her and they drop her off and she walks in and uh, to her amazement, she has is, she is ended up uh, in, in the cage, in the mixed martial arts cage, and she's standing across from uh, Brock Lesnar about to engage in, uh, in conflict. Uh, I, I, I don't know, but I, I'm kind of thinking she'd shake her head. I'm, I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> so, somehow we got turned around. I, I, I was supposed to, I thought I was going to have my hair done uh, out of place. That's exactly almost what the scripture means when it talks about any person in this world that is not saved, it's not where they belong. They are out of place. So where do they belong? They belong right here. This is where the lost people of your world belong. They belong in the house of God. God felt so strongly about that that he would give his only son. In fact, we understand that's the golden text of the Bible. Uh, John 3.16 summarizes again the heart of God and really the heartbeat of every church that's alive. And that is that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him wouldn't perish but have everlasting life. That's what we are here about. Now in this parable, Jesus uses, well certainly he does, uh, he uses the best example possible about describing lost humanity. And that's he talks about sheep. Uh, sheep are lost, and the reason why sheep are lost is because they have no sense of direction. Almost everything else that God created on, on this earth knows how to find their way home but sheep. Uh, the salmon, I'm sure you all have heard about the salmon. Uh, we, we took a trip to Alaska some years back, a few years back, and uh, I, was, I was always impressed at those National Geographic films when you could see the bear, uh, the grizzly bear, or the big brown, the last Kodiak bear, catching salmon out of the stream. I thought, that's, that's pretty impressive. But when I went to Alaska, I thought, well, there's not that much to this. Because during the spawning season, the salmon are literally so thick, you could, I, I could catch fish with my hands too. You can reach in and just throw them out because there are thousands of salmon. And you all that have watched the, the news reports on these or the, you know, you understand this, that, that a salmon, that once it's, uh, that it's birthed or, let's, or hatched, I guess, uh, they swim downstream, they find their way to the Pacific Ocean, they live their life cycle, and somehow it, in, in them is a, um, 
something that is in their genetic makeup, they find their way back home. They swim up, up the rivers, to the streams, to the small tributaries, to the very spot they were spawned, and that's where they die. And how do they do that? It's because God put in them, in their genetic makeup, their way to find their way back home. Uh, the, the sea turtles, same thing with sea turtles. When, uh, where we are from there in Maryland on the beach, uh, there are certain times of year, the same time of the year, every year, that they rope it off, and that's because this is where the sea turtles are hatched. And they come back the same time every year to the very same spot. How do they do that? Their creator put in them the way to find their way back home. Monarch butterflies. Uh, I, I, was, I was reading about this a couple of weeks ago, and I didn't realize it, but I mean, I knew that monarch butterflies, that they do a life cycle, and they, they end up in the same spot in Mexico. If you've never seen that, uh, Google that, or have someone to Google it for you and find that there's, there's this spot in Mexico where literally millions and millions of monarch butterflies come back, and it's, it's like a, well, I'm, I'm, it's, I'm struggling with words to describe that. What, what amazed me, though, is that there is not a monarch butterfly that lives for the full cycle, but it takes four generations of monarch butterflies to make the loop from the face of Mexico to wherever they are at in the U.S. And how do they do that? How does a uh, uh, four generations... Uh, now, uh, monarch butterflies, uh, they, they, have, they have to have teeny tiny brains. Uh, uh, mine's a little bit bigger than theirs. But uh, uh, How do they do that? Again, it's because God put in them the ability to find their way back home. But sheep don't have that ability. If, once a sheep is lost, it's lost. The only way that a sheep will ever get back home is if the shepherd finds it. Again, God... Certainly Jesus Christ knew what he was talking about and using sheep to illustrate the condition of this world. Yeah. Sheep, uh, they, they, uh, they have no defense mechanism. Uh, most of, of the rest of God's creation, he created in them either an ability to camouflage themselves or to defend themselves or that they could outrun their prey, but not with sheep. Uh, every, predator that, uh, every, every predator of the sheep can outrun the sheep. The sheep can't hide. They stick out like sore thumbs. They smell so bad that any of the predators can find sheep. Uh, they, they have no ability at all to defend themselves. They're not fighters. Again, it's not a question of will they die, but when they will die if they're lost. And Jesus says that's like this world, that this world is on a path away from God, and they have no hope unless somebody finds them. This world, uh, this world we, are, we are hopelessly lost. I, I was um, uh, reading the other day, uh, there, there is some truth to the, uh, what, what women would like to say is a myth, that men are uh, actually uh, uh, better at finding, uh, better at directions than women are. Mm-hmm. Yes, they really are. Uh, if, if, you, if you look this up, uh, there, there is something in how that our brain chemistry works that men are actually better, that we are not as directionally challenged as women are. But here, here is the problem. There's also truth in what, what we always say, that men never ask directions. And that is because we, we think we're so good at it that we don't know when we're lost. <laughs> that is really what this world is like. This world is hopelessly lost. They don't know they're lost. They have no clue. And even though God created in all of his creation a way to come home for lost humanity, the only way it will ever happen... Now, we want to get home. God created in all, in all humanity a desire to worship God. While there, there are some that struggle with how they, they, they may try a lot of other things, and it's because every person that's ever been created has been created to worship God. And those that are astray and those that are lost, they will not find their way home unless somehow the church rises up and does what it's called to do and placed here to do. Uh, we are we are forever lost. Again, when when someone is lost in the woods or is lost in the in a sandstorm in the desert, uh, it is true what what you've heard or read about that when a person is lost in the woods that they they will travel in circles. And the the reason why is that if, if there's not a fixed point, if if you can't locate the north star or some object that's in a fixed line, that we are doomed to wander in circles, forever lost. We'll just repeat over and over and over again unless there is a fixed point that we can find our way out. 
I want you to know, church, that Jesus Christ is the fixed point on earth. Oh, I, I love how the Bible says that, that he says, if I am lifted up on this earth, I will draw all men to me. And I believe that must have been what the writer of the book of Hebrews had to say when he said, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And so unless we can somehow create in the loss of this world the desire to look to Jesus, they're going to just wander forever and ever aimlessly in their sin. There's no hope without Jesus. He is the only answer for this world. Martin Luther, some of you may have heard his name. He is a, a, what we call one of the preachers of the Reformation. And Martin Luther believed that, that the way that a person was to be saved was not by confession to a priest or, or any rites of Catholicism. And so he broke from Catholicism and he discovered in prayer and Bible study that the only way that a person is really saved is that they are saved or justified by faith. Yes. He believed that, and, but in his studies, he discovered something else, and, and uh, he, he called this, I believe he was the first one to coin this phrase, he called it the slippery slope syndrome. And what he meant by this is that when a person begins to move away from God, that you need to stop that progress as soon as possible. Yeah, because if you don't, what happens is that it's like the, uh, going downhill that you pick up speed. And if you're not careful, it gets harder and harder and harder to stop. And you all have seen it. You know what I'm talking about here today. When a person takes a step away from God, the church needs to be right there, then and there, to stop that. Because the further that a person gets from God, the harder it is to reach. Amen. In our Sunday school lesson here today, we talked about America and how far that America has gone. And the only way that America is going to be pulled back is that we have to have a focus point of Jesus Christ. And yes. the church has to rise up and do her job of preaching the gospel. Otherwise, again, we will be forever and eternally uh, without those that we cherish so much. When, when you think about sheep, the other thing about sheep that um, they, they can't do, that other of God's creation can do, is that sheep have no ability to take care of themselves. They really do need a shepherd, they need someone to take care of them. If, if a sheep doesn't have a shepherd and it gets lost, there's no one to take care of its wool and its, and its wool continues to grow. It gets tangled with the briars in the, in the, in the wilderness. Uh, it gets infected with disease. Uh, there have been sheep that have been found that have been lost that have killed themselves, not, but they died of starvation because their wool got hung in the brush and they couldn't get out. Again, sheep need a shepherd. They cannot Amen. find their way back home. They have no way to defend themselves. They cannot clean themselves. Most other gods, a horse can clean itself. A cats clean themselves. They lay around all day and they clean themselves. Even pigs clean themselves. But sheep don't. They need a shepherd. Yes. So you say, preacher, what are you saying today? I'm saying that our very reason for existence here in this location at the Little Leaven World Church of God of Prophecy is that there is a lost world that is dying and that will never find their way home. Uh, we, what we're about here, we're not about building beautiful buildings, and you folks have one. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that and we should do our very best for God, but that is not why we are here. That's right. If this building burnt down after we have dinner... Um, and when we're all home safe and sound if a tornado comes through tomorrow and moves this thing off of its foundation and there's no longer a building here the church stays here yes. we are the church and we exist here not for a building and not for dinners and, 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 and you, not, not even to give a minister a job Amen. Uh, you all do your very best for your good pastor and his wife but that's not why this church is here. Right. That's right. Uh, this church is here for one reason and one reason only, and that is to complete the work of Jesus Christ. Amen. He said, I came to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. That's what we exist for. And I'm praying this year, God, give you such a harvest. I'm telling you, my heart's been stirred today with your worship. Yes. Uh, it, a church that's alive. I, I, I felt uh, the, the liveliness of this church as we have gathered for worship. And, and I celebrate again the, uh, the vision and the goal of your pastor. We want to turn this community to the, to the Lord Jesus Christ. It is their only hope. It is their only hope. Yes, it is. And, and when I say that this church is their only hope, uh, someone already said it today. I can't remember exactly who said that. But when we talk about the church, 
who are we talking about? We're talking about you. And so here's where this sermon comes to a conclusion. You, you are the only hope for this community. Mm -hmm. Hell is, is more real than we can even imagine. We talked about it just a little bit here today. Hell is more real than even you can imagine. It is worse than you can imagine. And you, you, again, you are the hope of this world. If your family gets saved, if you have family members that are not saved, you are their hope. If you have friends that are not saved, you are their hope. Uh, people in this uh, valley that you haven't met yet, you are their only hope. If we don't do what we're called to do, again, people will go to hell. God help us to preach the gospel, to lift up Jesus Christ as a focus point for all those that are lost. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads this morning. I, I don't know, if, do you, do you uh, have someone place the keyboard? Uh, okay. The song that Sister Pam was singing earlier, Come to Jesus, is one of my favorite songs to think about during a time like this. And I like what it talks about running to Jesus, run to Jesus, run to Jesus. The sermon that I've shared today is, has really been and you're not saved. It's, it's not by accident, but it's by design uh, that a God that would love you so much that he would send his son to give his life for you would arrange and coordinate a day such as today that you could call on him, that you could come to him. We're here to pray for you today and to pray with you. While your heads are bowed, I'm going to call upon your pastor once again. Brother Bo, if you would, would you stand and would you pray for us here today? Father, we come to you today, Lord, and we see that your heart is for the lost. That you seek and to save the lost. And right now, Father, we ask that you would draw, draw us to you, draw the lost to you, and let the heart that's in you be in us, that we would feel your heart for lost people, that we would feel your love, that we would go to seek and to save those that are lost. I'm going to, uh, you know, I don't know how much time that we need to uh, labor this point, but I'm going to ask you to stand with me. If you